What's up YouTube? So we had one hell of an episode of Game of Thrones. It was incredibly too lit to quit. So I'm going to go through my top 10 moments and parts of this episode that I absolutely loved. We had just the possibly the best battle scene I think so far on the show. Definitely the most rewarding as well due to the end of the episode. But anyway, let's jump in. So we had that part, that cliffhanger at the end of the last episode when Daenerys turns up after leaving her kids in charge and they throw in a pizza party and there's beer bongs everywhere. Well, yeah, the city is screwed due to, well, I thought it was decent management by Tyrion there, but it turns out that it absolutely wasn't. But I loved her showing her power and Tyrion reminding her just why she's doing this and she doesn't want to be like her father. Just like across the narrow sea with Ramsay, the two smug men of this episode got absolutely destroyed. And I did love this throwdown altercation between Daenerys and the three masters where <laughs> she pretty much got what she wanted and showed them who is the absolute boss. And it was a bit predictable this part because I kind of guessed that the dragons would be used. So I for one have been waiting for this scene for absolutely ages with Daenerys on the back of her dragons laying waste to all the people who want to kill her which was absolutely awesome and I think that this part just after where we see her become the veteran negotiator and well veteran queen so far that she's becoming she absolutely slayed and destroyed and just like Jon Snow, she's taken things into her own hands. So this is having big implications for what's to come in the coming last few seasons of the show. With her destroying, and in my opinion, what I reckon will be, the dragons will fly over and destroy the White Walkers. So this is big, big setup for what's to end the series. So the two bastards finally meet, which is set us up for the rest of the episode and well I'm not sure what Jon Snow is expecting but we do know actually kind of the way he didn't expect Ramsay to meet him in single combat he just wanted to get him angry rile him up and point out that well yeah your army won't fight for you if they know that you won't fight for them which is another a big thing here from the start of the episode so you can see the parallels between the two stories, albeit the first story at the start was very, very short, but well, it gave us everything that we actually wanted. So the thing is, Jon Snow thinks he's playing a smart game here by being ruthless. Only issue is Ramsay, is, well, his power was to be very, very ruthless and be as cruel as possible and use tactics which you wouldn't even expect him to use because they are so dastardly. So here at the camp again, we get Jon Snow requesting Melisandre not to revive him. He does not want a resuscitation order there, which is quite interesting because of the little conversation between Davos and Tormund just before this section here, where they discuss what they are fighting for, who they are fighting for, where they thought that Mance Raider would be the one to lead them through the long night. And well, Davos thought that Stannis would be the one to actually help them out and lead everyone to prosperity. And they were both wrong. And they acknowledged that, well, Jon Snow's not a king, but he is the prince that was promised. Which, if you want to learn more about that, that is in a video on my channel, which I uploaded a couple of days ago, which you should check out. It's quite in-depth and it's really interesting. So Davos, as always, before his battle, goes off for a lovely little stroll across the woods. And he comes, funnily, this is, I found this a bit convenient, but he comes across the toy that he gave to Shireen, who was burnt by, well, the worst father in the world, Stannis the Manis. But now he's like, well, I'm not too sure what's going on. Have I been told lies? He Obviously, at the end, he looks at Melisandre. He doesn't trust her one bit. Well, I wouldn't either, to be honest. So there's discord happening in the Team Jon Snow camp. 
Now, I never expected the Greyjoys to get to the Daenerys camp really that quickly. I thought it would be kind of a finale-esque ending, but I guess, just like the producers said, we they can tell that we're getting towards the end now, and I can really tell that we're moving, progressing a lot faster. This season has had a lot of reveals, which would have been probably held over a couple of episodes in the earlier part of the seasons, but we're going quite fast here, and it was great to see Tyrion lord it over Theon, that he made fun of his height, etc., which was really funny to see, and see Theon be like, well, yeah, I've absolutely fucked it, mate. So it was really smart of Yara and Theon here to play on the whole fact that Euron's going to come over and try and do the same thing as what a Dothraki would actually do. So they played on the woman card here, and they've expertly manoeuvred the support from Daenerys here, and to be able to really live out as kings and queens of the Iron Islands, and Yara can sit atop the Salt Throne. But it's come at a cost of a price of, well, their entire livelihood. Which, eh, it's, it's okay, I think. I did really like this scene a lot. The actors, all players in it were fantastic. And I'm glad we're getting the kind of, the manoeuvrability and the smart Daenerys back here. I may also add that I am very, very, very hardly shipping Yara and Daenerys. This is really, well, you could just tell the chemistry was there between the two. And I think the actress that plays Yara, at first, I didn't think she was that good. It was one of my favourite scenes in the books when Theon goes back to the islands and he meets his sister. But he doesn't know it's his sister to begin with and it's kind of a funny to and fro. I think that scene was kind of spoiled on the show by the acting. But the two have become perfection in their roles. And Yara was just hilarious in this scene. So at the start of the battle, I think that they have really done a disservice to Jon Snow's character here by having him pretty much kind of fall and prey to his emotions, which Sansa actually begged him not to, because the minute he does what Ramsay is expecting him to do, then, well, yeah, you're pretty much screwed in the eyes of Ramsay. And he played into him completely here by falling for the trap of his brother falling to his death and then trying to save him but well yeah it's exactly what he wanted to do he didn't sit there and wait for him to attack which really he should have done so kind of let down the character here a lot so we get to the main battle here of Winterfell and I have to say just an absolute shout out to the production staff behind the battle here in all of the trailers leading up to this season we had just complete an immense amount of actual really footage in the trailers of this battle and this really was to be the biggest part of the show i thought i thought this would be the finale however it was not and the brutality and the violence in this kind of battle alone was just staggering and it wasn't kind of like you see battles in Lord of the Rings where the hero is just fighting off pretty easily well here <laughs> he wasn't and it shows that just the desperation and really the what the actions of the nobleman lead to and it leads to this disgusting just horrible battle where people were lying there with guts hanging out which you saw and head being lopped off and just, <laughs> just the real sheer kind of I don't know if it would be the shell shock I don't know if that's the right word for a sword battle but that would be the best way to depict it or the word I would say to use for it and well unfortunately Jon Snow you've led yourself into a really really big snafu here now the only issue I would probably say about this episode is that it was very predictable However, all the things I predicted and that I expected to happen, happened, well, they were ones that I very, very much wanted to actually happen here. So, Gondor called for aid, and Rohan answered with the Knights of the Bell coming down 
to really actually save everyone's life. Well, everyone's life, but apart from people they killed. But they did help out hum massively, hum massively here. And it's not really clear as to what Littlefinger will actually want. Will he ask for Santa's hand in marriage as a thank you for helping them? And also, who will actually be the Lord of Winterfell? Will Sansa take ownership of the Lord title, or will it be Jon Snow? So there's a lot of answers to be, or questions to be answered there as well. One thing also a callback to just earlier that I talked about, the Lord of Light. It seems that when Jon Snow actually was crushed and then came out, the sunlight looked pretty interesting, and it did look like he was being reborn. So is he being reborn as to as or high? Yeah, well, I think he is. So one one perished sadly. We also had obviously Ramsay die in this episode as well. We had the Stark boy die as well, sadly. Uh, well, that's Rickon obviously, and we had as well a small John Umber die at the well, the mouth of Tormund as well, which was quite a satisfying scene to behold, actually. Now, this was the most satisfying part of the episode, seeing the Stark banner hoisted at Winterfell, and now, for the first time in ages, a Stark sits at Winterfell. So, yes, just the righteous roar happened at my sofa when this actually happened in the TV show. Also, speaking of satisfying scenes, we see Ramsay absolutely smashed in the face by Jon Snow, who I'm sad he didn't actually kill him. I think Jon Snow would have enjoyed that, actually, but he saw that Sansa deserved to see him die more. So this is one of the rare episodes where the good guys actually win for once. So I expect a lot of heartache and terror in the upcoming episodes. But anyway, if you enjoyed that episode, and the, well, this video you just watched, drop a like and a subscribe and I'll be back soon with more similar content.